Yo, what is going on guys? It's Crypto TMG and I'm back with a brand new video. And yes guys, we're back. We're back in LFM. And I ain't gonna lie, man, this is the first race I've done in like, I don't know, maybe like two months. Two months. So this is the qualifying lap. Um, I wasn't that happy with it. I definitely think I could have went quicker, but let the lap run through and I'll tell you why I think I made the mistakes. Not too bad from turn one. The Aston, because it does have quite good traction control and TC2, in most cars on the exit of turn one, the back end seems to step out, but the Aston is, is pretty cool. Um, through here, I got sideways a little bit and sort of just, I don't know, I just didn't manage to get the right line for the corner. So I definitely lost a couple of tenths in the middle sector compared to my like, best sector times. Um, again, I think I turned in a little bit early here, so I couldn't get on the front on, on the exit as quick as I might have wanted to. But still, nevertheless, yellow not flag, a bad flag, lap so that. far. Um, Every time I do this track, I always think about the chicane. I always gear myself up to just nail the chicane. And I managed to actually get through the chicane not too bad. I think I could have carried a little bit more speed through. But again, I didn't want to invalidate because I didn't really have a, a really strong banker lap in. And this is where I feel like I just completely messed it up. I'm going into the hairpin and I just overshoot the corner a bit too much. Now, I knew previously the lap before I didn't have a great last sector. So there was definitely time to find. Um, and as we get into the last corner, you see we make a little bit more time up. I, I definitely think I could have done towards a low 26, man, but it wasn't to be, Get man. And we managed to hit a 26.7 and I really feel like I could have got a 26.2 if I was able to nail my sectors. You can see here the sector times, man. My best first sector um, is a 20.0. I've done a 33.6 in the middle before and I've done a 32.4 in the last before. So there's definitely around about half a second now I feel like that's probably my limit in the Aston um, I would have liked to have got maybe like a 26.4 but didn't manage to do it but going on to the start of the race I'm not gonna lie I was I was genuinely kind of nervous because I thought wow I haven't raced in a little while I don't want to bin anybody in my first race back doing LFM um, and Donington's a track where you can easily easily get into a crash so I, I just try to you know keep my nose clean for the start of the race and here we go green 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 and wow we're getting absolutely swamped by the Audis absolutely swamped and I don't know what happened I went to turn right here I had literally no grip whatsoever literally no grip and um, end up losing positions at the start man bad start obviously the Aston not great on acceleration still even after the buff um, and you know for the first few laps I'm just I'm just going to try and get my bearings because I haven't been in this in this situation for a while. I haven't been racing um, for for a couple of couple of couple of months almost. So at the moment I'm sliding around and guys, if you can already see the mistake that I've made, look at the fuel. For some reason, I don't know what told me. Maybe because um, maybe because it's such a short lap. I just felt as if I didn't need to have a crazy amount of fuel. But at this point in the race, I haven't even noticed the fuel yet. As the two guys in front of me take each other out, and that was up a couple of positions, a couple of positions I actually lost at the start. Um, I started sixth and I ended up losing out around about three positions. Uh, almost got passed around the outside of turn one by the Audi behind me, but I managed to hold on to it. And you can see overshoot the brakes, just really struggling on the first lap. Car on the um, left. Be on the left. Just really couldn't really get it together. Just felt like I was a uh, <laughs> super rusty man. But um, still, left. we're gonna defend the inside. We know it's literally impossible to get left. around the outside of turn one because there's just no grip on the outside line. So again, now I just wanted to get my head down and focus. I wasn't too sure how fast the guy was behind, but I knew that obviously I qualified in front of him so I knew I definitely had the pace. It was just about now trying to find my rhythm back into sixth place, the place where we started and just trying to, you know, get used to actually just being racing again. Um, I've been doing hot laps now and then but actual racing with like a decent amount of fuel on, haven't done as much. So it was really, you know, going to take me a few laps to get up to speed and I was like the only guy in the Aston that wasn't I was the only guy in, the, I think, the top 10 at the start of the race that wasn't in a, a Audi or a Porsche. So I'm going to have to actually try the Audi around here. 
I should try the Porsche, but you guys know how I feel about that. Um, so you can see the guys up ahead really battling. I think the leader's absolutely just got off. He was quite a bit quicker in quality as well. So um, we pretty much knew he would, you know, be disappearing into the distance. But the battle ahead seemed to be a fierce one. And again, a couple of guys crash. And we move forward once more. But I think this was actually um, Boris ahead of us. So <laughs> one of the main guys in LFM looks as if he was uh, taking out the opposition. But nevertheless, it allowed us to get back onto the back of the Audi. And now I was going to find out whether I had the pace to keep up and what the car felt like in the, uh, the, the terminal air of the car in front. And sometimes, depending on what car you drive, sometimes the car that you are following is actually quite hard to follow when you get close. Um, but at the moment, it wasn't too bad. The thing is with Donington, like sometimes when you get too close through a certain corners, it's quite hard to see the corner in front. And obviously, the, the main part where you want to be close is probably through the chicane because all the overtaking opportunities are probably just after the chicane, mainly on this track. And I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to get too many track warnings because it's very easy to get track warnings. But I felt like the Aston is quite easy to get through the chicane in, in third gear. Some cars are a little bit more difficult, so I was hoping I could carry more speed through that corner than the guy in front, especially with the Aston being pretty nice over the the bump that can unsettle the cars. Um, so I thought if that's going to be the place where I'm going to catch him. It's probably most likely because of the acceleration of the Aston. Out of these tight corners, it's going to be a struggle to, you know, really get to grips with the Audi. Because the Audi does kind of just boot out of corners, pretty similar to the Porsche, where the Aston's a bit more of a struggle. So um, that was my main goal, was to try and get close to the chicane and just try and fly through the chicane and see if I can get a run into the next hairpin. But um, at the moment, you can see he was pretty quick and we're just trying to you know latch onto the back see if we can catch up to the the cars in front but fifth position not too bad lad not too bad at all i was actually ranked fifth in the lobby and i haven't done lfm for a while so i was actually surprised um so i thought well i'm in the position where my rank tells me i should be in and uh, i shouldn't lose too much elo or anything like that if i finish here so my focus was is to not get past see if i could stick to the guy in front I wasn't going to try and kill myself to make it happen, but um, it's, it definitely seemed like the, the second part of the lap, we gained a lot. At the start of the lap, he seems to get off quite a bit, but when we get to um, when we get to just past the chicane, as Boris goes wide, and I thought I was going to get the run, but you can just see the acceleration. Because he took such a deep line in, he was able to get on, straighten the car up, get on the front wall a bit earlier, and um, pull away again. But... I could see he was under pressure a little bit and I thought, well, if I can keep this up, then it shouldn't be too bad. Into the 26s, 26.8, my fastest lap at the moment. And I'm not sure what the leader was doing, but in quality he was doing 25.8, which is pretty damn fast. So um, I thought there was definitely more time in my lap, definitely more time in my laps. Um, just trying to get comfortable again. I still think there is work to do on the setup that I've got at the moment is a little bit understeer through certain corners and it, it didn't really allow me to carry the speed that I wanted to while being behind the Audi because there's some corners where if you can just get a good run you can really like put pressure on the opponent make them defend into corners they don't want to defend and then obviously set set up your overtakes for other corners in the future but um Donington is can be a pretty difficult track to overtake and it's not that easy to follow really closely either because you some of the corners if you break slightly too late you're going to end up hitting the guy in front but again as we go for the chicane in third gear i just feel like the aston's just smoother through the chicane than the audi i feel the audi probably struggles a little bit more over the over the uh, bumps um but nevertheless again as we get towards the hairpin we're closing again but on acceleration look at that we're just getting absolutely mullered and i, I generally thought that the acceleration for the aston was fixed or improved quite a lot but it still feels like a bit of a struggle maybe it's the tc2 and tc2 on 8 maybe it's that um i'm not too sure but for sure we couldn't when it came to acceleration we were getting absolutely body slammed it was pretty damn sad 
but again just going down the hill trying to make sure we don't lose too much time and at the moment I'm thinking I, I need to find a way to stick with him in the first sector so by the time I get to the third sector I can get a lot closer but he was pretty quick through the first sector and I couldn't really do anything um, I don't know why I just when I put the fuel on I just could not get a good first sector man and I think he was slightly catching the Porsche in front remember we still have the Audi behind us as well um, so it was always going to be a difficult race I wasn't really looking in my mirrors too much because the guy behind me wasn't that close and as you can see again Boris has pulled out a decent gap um, by the time we got to the chicane and this time actually I, I went slightly too deep and I wasn't able to um, get the run but again we go quite deep on the brakes why can't I break like that on my quality lap um, it was definitely a better run than what I had on my quality lap and I was starting to think should I put the TC down to one is that going to help me get a better run out of the corners but I actually didn't want to change too much because for all I know I'll probably change it and then back end steps out and I end up binning it and I did not want to do that so Boris actually does a 26-6 so he's about three times quicker on that last lap and I think even the guy behind was quicker than me so I thought no I've got to uh <laughs> I've got to put my foot down. I'm not trying to, um, you know, end up defending and driving in my mirrors because that way I'll definitely just get pulled away from. So I try to, you know, put my foot down a little bit. Actually had a decent first sector this time. I felt like he hadn't got away through the first sector into the middle sector as well. Um, and this was the corner that I needed to get right. As you get on the curb, it's very easy to end up in the wall. But as I said, the Aston riding curves pretty nicely and that was much much more like it through the middle sector much more like it through the first sector actually up on my fastest lap and if i could just have a, a good chicane then i knew i would close the gap a little bit and i end up flying through the chicane i think slightly cutting it but you can see how much we gain um, i think i got that slightly wrong i don't think i cut it too much but you can see we definitely took a lot of time out of boris on this lap almost almost his whole advantage was gone and it was a pretty good lap apart from the you know the little cut at the end but we don't want to talk about that you know what i mean but yeah on for it was on for actual 26-3 uh, we did a 26-4 obviously not official but in my eyes i didn't care i still had two track warnings left so as long as, as long as we don't get a penalty it's all good lads it's all good but 10 minutes of the race gone already and sometimes when you're in a when you're in a battle you don't even realize the time you don't even realize the time and um i was just thinking if i can get closer to boris i could i think i could get him and i think i can get the guy in front and that would have that would have put me on the podium and i, I would have been very happy with a podium on my return um to lfm boris goes a little bit wide and now we get the run now this is the closest i have been the closest i've been i was trying to focus on you know turning kind of turning early get on the brakes a little bit early and turning early and this is what's difficult when you get close behind someone trying to i didn't want to get another i didn't want to get another warning so i tried to judge him i end up just going in way too slow and not being able to carry the speed through because as i said before when you're really close to certain cars you can't actually see the corners in front of you and i did not want to get a warning because i didn't want to be driving on eggshells and then get into the chicane and kind of not pushing at all you know if i'm gonna get warnings i'm gonna get them right at the end of the race where i know i can get to the end without getting a penalty you know but again i allowed him to to pull away in the last sector where generally speaking we were we were faster than him. so um that was my mistake and we go a little bit wide at turn one car size a little bit maybe i broke a little bit too deep into the corner and we're already losing time on this lap but you can see the guy in the Porsche ahead isn't getting away and this might turn into a three or a four car battle by the end. Um, 12 minutes to go, as I said, halfway through the race. And at this moment, I began looking at my fuel thinking, hmm, we're halfway through pretty much. We've done eight laps. I've got eight laps left of fuel. This could be pretty damn tight depending on how fast the leader is and you can see the leader is gone 
the guy in second place is gone. So I started to think about the fuel, but in my mind, it was like, listen, if I am short, there's no way I'm gonna be able to save it now, just 12 minutes, okay? So I'm either just gonna go for it and suffer the consequences, or I'm just gonna have to make a splash and dash, <laughs> okay? So that was really my mentality, but I was thinking, there's no way, there's no way I'm gonna, no way I'm short fuels. Honestly, I can't be. I've got eight laps left worth of fuel. There's 11, well, 12 minutes left. And I remembered how short the laps are around here. So, wasn't too much in panic mode yet. Um, I still wanted to focus on closing down back on the Audi. And the Audi behind me was getting closer as well. So it was time to put in some decent laps, some consistent laps. Because my consistency in this race was up and down, man. I was, you know, sometimes, you know, doing mid 26s and I drop back to 27 twos, then back in the 26. And often there was a sort of a, a four or five temp swing in lap times which is pretty bad you want to sort of keep your difference between laps within two temps um, and that's where you're going to find that consistent pace which doesn't really you know doesn't hinder you too much but when you start having bigger gaps like four five temps six temps then you can go from attacking someone to literally being under pressure just because you're kind of driving erratically you know but Boris has a moment gets completely sideways and if I was able to have stayed consistent earlier I would have been right there to take advantage of it but I was too far behind I dropped back and now again we're right on the back of him so that's that's the mistake I made um, and it, it's annoying man it's annoying when you see someone make a mistake and then you can't you know you're not there to, to capitalize on it this is one of those tracks where um, you have to be ready for for anything to to pop off because it's not an easy track to pass so any opportunity you get you need to be right there but as I said I had already dropped back so it, it was what it was but again you can see the acceleration that Audi was getting out of turn one was insane it was so difficult to keep up on the exit of turn one I was just like wow this guy's pulling away from me so much through that section and I'm trying to basically spend the rest of the lap fighting to get back to the back of his car before we get to the chicane you know but again through the middle sector, pretty even Stevens. Um, it's pretty much after this corner where we tend to, to catch up a little bit, but he had a better corner than us there. I think we turned in slightly too late, got a bit sideways, scrubbed the tyres over the surface and just didn't manage to carry any speed through the corner whatsoever. But then we actually hit that chicane pretty nice, man. You can see we gained quite a bit every single time. Every time we got that chicane right, we gained a lot. And again right on the back of Boris straight away and that was it was so frustrating because I, I never caught him at a point where I had an opportunity to dive down the inside and he actually goes deep into that corner and so do I so again I missed the opportunity because I, I made the same mistake that he did and, um, you can see I actually had a slower lap than the guy behind the guy behind with a 26.8 half a second faster as I said you know these fluctuating laps no good no good for race pace man um, we definitely need to get our laps within two temps but again it's my first race back I'm a little bit rusty and I'm still in the top five of the top tier so um, it's not too bad it's not disastrous I feel like we could have improved our pace if, if we was running free air I think I could have been like in the mid 26s and most laps but because we're stuck behind someone and you just get dirty air and stuff like that and you start thinking about where you can overtake, you start making mistakes and stuff. Um, that kind of affected the pace a little bit. But you can see again we're on the back of him and this was the closest I've gotten. I, I could have sent it down the inside of the chicane but again I didn't want to get that penalty and completely messed the line up here. Maybe I should have went down into second, maybe. Um, but it was a... Uh, it was one of them ones where I, I just wasn't too sure, man. I just tried to stay as close as possible. What I really wanted to do was I wanted to break slightly earlier and then get a run through the through the first part of the chicane and just completely and utterly just send it. And again, he runs wide and again, I wasn't there to take advantage, man. And with the Audi's acceleration, I just couldn't 
just couldn't you know find that extra bit of speed and the guy in front also was slipping back as well i don't know if these guys killed their tires or whatnot but you could see they were starting to struggle and um, at the moment my tires felt good but guys look in the bottom right hand corner i've got four laps worth of fuel and listen i wasn't great in maths or nothing but seven minutes four laps man <laughs> this is going to be a tight one a proper tight one and i was thinking well, there's no way as i get sideways almost been it hold on to it but we're gonna have damaged our tires a little bit and we're gonna have lost time so that was actually the moment where i looked at the fuel and i thought shit have i got enough fuel i didn't bother to work i couldn't even remember guys that's that's how long ago I, I did the LFM race. I couldn't even remember what the standard fuel was for LFM races. Now I know it's like around about 43 litres. You always want around about 43 litres. I think I started the race on 40 or 41. Um, if, I can, if I can remember rightly. So I'm looking at the fuel like, oh, oh, I, think, I think I've messed the fuel up. I started trying to work out the lap times that the leaders would need for it not for me not to have to make a pit stop so while i'm racing this is all i'm thinking about now and you'll see i start to get a little bit more erratic with my driving because i'm just sat here trying to work it out i know there's no point trying to fuel save it's not going to happen i am not about to drive in safety car mode <laughs> okay on map was it like map 8 safety car mode i ain't about to do that bro i'm either sending it or I'm pitting <laughs> that's that was my mentality for this one man and um the worst thing is I could literally see the guys in front of me starting to struggle with pace. Okay, I wasn't really struggling with pace, I was just struggling with consistency. And because I could see that they were slowing down, I was thinking, I know if I just stay on him, I might get a chance. I know I'll get a chance. But um, still through the important corners where I needed to be quicker, I was making tiny mistakes or mi minor um, misjudgments which was allowing him to pull away through these sections again carry good speed through the chicane I might have cut that one slightly that time no I got away with it which is weird because sometimes it, it feels and looks exactly the same but you end up cutting again we get super close through the hairpin and you can see like we can you know we can stick to him pretty easily and the guy in front um, but the Audi is just is a very hard car to get past on tracks like this where you have these tight corners where they can just power out and um, again I drop a 26.8 I could have definitely gone quicker but I just can't get past and you see the guy in front in the Porsche he also runs wide as well so he's now being under pressure he's going to be driving in his mirrors Boris is trying to get past him while driving in his mirrors as well and I guess the guy behind me is pretty close so not only have I got the battle to contend with up front, I've got a guy behind me and my fuel is dangerously low with four minutes to go, two laps worth of fuel. It is looking super sad. Super sad. Because I know from the lap times and looking at how far the leader is ahead. Remember, the guy that you can see on the minimap, that's not even the leader. That's the guy that's in second. So the leader is even further down the road. And I thought, there's no way running out of fuel no way so at this point i'm literally minimap watching i'm driving i'm doing my race but i am minimap watching and at this point i was looking at where the leader was going across the line and i'm thinking i was like no he's gonna go past the line before we get to three three minutes right, so I, at this point i know it is ultra sad <laughs> okay i'm not going to make it on the fuel lads i'm not gonna do it but i still want to race i still want to be in it and you know some might say this is wrong because obviously i know that i'm going to have to pit but the racer inside you just, just won't allow you to just you know just not attack these guys you know what i'm saying but at the same time i, I made sure i wasn't gonna do nothing stupid i wasn't gonna end up getting into a crash when i knew that i needed fuel but look this is the stage when i know i'm running out of fuel this is the stage where, where i end up getting super close through sector one and quite a lot of understeer following him through the fast right hander but this is the closest i've been through sector one and it came all the way at the end of the race when i knew i didn't have enough fuel unbelievable 
but again we get quite a lot of understeer when we get too close to the uh, faster corner and we end up dropping back a little bit and it was it was so annoying man so annoying it was a good race as well because we've literally been following each other nose to tail the whole entire time and um just over two minutes left i overshoot the chicane straight landing over the gravel you know had to take my losses man had to and uh yeah as i said this was this this was a this was a tough one man because it was a very good race and it was just starting to get spicy as well and i feel like with these guys attacking each other i might get that one opportunity that allows me to dive down the inside or something like that but no it didn't happen and i looked at the fuel 2.6 liters left using an average of 2.34 the jig is up we've got this lap plus one more to do so i knew what time it was and i knew how sad <laughs> how sad this was especially for my elo rating as well because i haven't been on for a while and being ranked fifth in the lobby i was in fifth position so i probably wasn't going to lose anything um and yeah unfortunately lads unfortunately we're gonna have to make that pit stop we're going to have to pit on this lap otherwise we're not making it to the end and damn 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 a good race absolutely ruined by my stupidity by me putting in a silly amount of fuel um I should have remembered 43 44 liters every time does the trick in lfm in these 25 minute races so uh, hey man it was it was my bad cuz it was my bad my bad and now i because because i know that you know i'm not gonna be finishing in in these positions i just I pretty much just gave up on it and look look at there's another Audi behind as well that's also joined the party so obviously I'm missing out on the race and I end up having to pit and it's just like oh sad like god damn it I bet the guys behind us are thinking what is this guy doing and yes into the pit lane 3.6 seconds I just put three liters in I couldn't I even forgot to turn off the engine man this is how deep it is i literally forgot i needed to turn off the engine so we ended up sitting in the pits for ages so i lost even more time even more positions um splash and dash just three seconds it was cool but we, we must have lost an extra four or five seconds just sat there in the pit lane and actually it was actually pretty costly because i think there was a gaggle of cars that ended up jumping me and i may have been able to get out ahead of these guys if I didn't mess around in the pit stop and not turn off my engine and that would have been us into the top 20 so even that was a disaster you know pretty much the whole race was was set up to be a disaster from the absolute beginning I think when you're rusty on a game there is a couple of things that you know are noticeable you notice I had a bad start I had bad consistency I made bad decisions with the fuel and I had a bad pit stop and all those things only happen to you when you are rusty because I'm not you know I'm not as switched on as I would be if I was league racing and making sure everything was perfect so yeah man this is just just the first race first race back syndrome that's what I'm going to call it next race we're definitely going to improve we definitely want to improve the pace and the consistency and again I made another mistake I think in general that's the only thing i probably didn't make a massive driving error while driving that was pretty much it but that's like the bare minimum at this stage but as you can see we're not close enough to the we're gonna come home in p20 after being p5 the whole entire race man that was tough that was sadder than sad but guys trust me for the next one we're gonna try and improve quite a lot hopefully we can improve the setup as well but anyway guys it's crypto tmg like and subscribe hit the notification bell to catch my videos first and also guys make sure you go check out my second channel where we'll be dropping other content from all the other games that i play don't miss it definitely worthwhile anyway guys peace